maybe he's, he's got a hurt left, the right hand. I want people to be honest. I don't know if I've ever heard a fighter talk about it. No, to a championship fight in number four. Russell with the left through the guard of Maxayo. Trying to control the pace now again. Popping with the lead left. You know, from pure volume standpoint, Russell, like this round, he's only thrown 18 punches. Wow. Now only 37 for McSyle, but still, Russell's not doing a lot offensively. Other time will catch up with all of us, not saying that that is the case. Yet, but perhaps some signs, as we saw against Nyamai on the second half of their title fight. Great timing right there for McSyle. Now, you want to hope that, mm -hmm. because he's got his hands down. Again, Maxiah goes to the body. Russell, for a couple of left hooks, one to the body, one upstairs. That's really what it boils down to now for Russell, right, Ever? Exactly, 100%. Now, if Russell's going to try to lamp that left, you want to time him exactly. and hook with him. You want, once he throws that left, you hook with your own left. Left hook, if you're Maxayo. Now, it's going to get interesting for Russell because now he's got that left. The only thing that he's got is the left. He's used to setting up his punches with the with the right. He's not going to be able to do it. Yeah, the adversity that Gary Russell Jr. has had to endure during his lengthy time off, growing exponentially here, now in this championship fight. With that right shoulder... Causing them some problems. A minute and a half left in the fifth. Now, McSyle has on several occasions been close to walking into a left-handed yeah. Russell. It can happen. So we have to keep that in mind. And will it hurt McSyle? We'll see. Yeah, Russell is still making it difficult for McSyle to get inside. Yes. And, of course, McSyle, if he's smart, will try to fight a kiss and say, I, whether I will. He has experience necessary, and here he is, Prime, 26, 23 and 0 with 16 KOs. Looking to usurp Gary Russell Jr. Russell coming forward with the left block by McSyle. I think one thing that McSyle is doing wrong is that he, he's pressuring Russell, and Russell's timing him. Yeah. Yes, he was being it. That's exactly right. Now, that was good body work by McSyle, and he has done better body work in his fight. And depending how serious that right shoulder injury is here in an Atlantic City casino, Gary Russell Jr. may be rendered a one-armed bandit for the rest of this fight as we go to round number six. I was wondering where you were headed with that. That was good. <laughs> well, no laughing matter for Gary. You know. Now, McSyle... Not getting all money of those punches in, but here's where he kind of falls on top of... Six, McSayo telling us that against a Sayhawk, he learned how to adjust in the middle of a fight. He feels it's going to help him here tonight against Gary Russell Jr. By the way, McSayo's fought three times since yeah. Russell's last fight in February in 2020, right before the world changed forever. Now... Let's let's put this in perspective now. We're into round six. These rounds, we're saying that McSyle's kind of controlling the real estate, but that doesn't mean Russell isn't winning some of these rounds. And he may be. Well, you know, we're uh, we're looking at this uh, in one lens by calling the fight and looking at the strategy, etc. But, but who knows who's winning these rounds? It's possible Russell has bent some. Let's get a quick update from Jim Gray. Tomorrow I asked uh, Gary Allen Russell, the brother over there training Gary Russell Jr., about his right shoulder, and the doctor came in the ring. He said, there is no problem with it. I said, why did the doctor ask him that? He said, the doctor doesn't have any idea what's going on here. I said, are you sure there's not a problem? He said, ask Gary Russell Jr. about it after the fight. That's all they would say. Tomorrow. There's a left up I do, Maxal, you want to start fainting a little bit more now. Set up traps. He faints. He is the left hand that Russell only has. So you faint. You wait for him to throw it. You know, we heard from Jim Gray. We passed the midpoint of the sixth. And while they may say there's nothing wrong with Gary Russell Jr., he's only thrown nine punches in the round. Yeah, precisely. 
and he's not been active. So, oh, nice counter right there. Again, there's the counter when Russell tries to throw the left hand. And we're used to seeing Russell throw variety of punches. He's a throwing a combination, a thrower, uh, but we're not going to see that tonight because he's only got one hand. And the right hand is his jab hand. Yes. That's his bread and butter, but he's thrown only half as many as Maxile here tonight. And mind you, we're speculating on this because we also said he probably had an injury. And pretty well, it's pretty clear that whatever the reason is, he's not throwing that right hand very much. Yeah, thank you for pointing that out because a lot of people don't know that. Yeah, you're right. Russell told everyone. You know, Maxile is throwing more than Russell. And again, controlling the real estate. The question you have to ask yourself, I guess, is are the few of the punches that Russell is landing effective enough to win him a round? I don't know. McSyle doing something here that we haven't seen as much of, throwing combinations, a three-punch combination, two of the three got in. And then later on, he, he, of course, he wants to use the uppercut. Now, this one doesn't quite get there, but it half-landed. And that was... Throws. Usually 38 jabs around, number three among all fighters. Gary Russell Jr. threw zero in round six, but hey, nothing's wrong with his right shoulder, Adam. <laughs> Messiah, you want to pick it up a little bit more. Uh, yeah. I, know, I know that Russell is more, he's really smart. He's making this complicated for Messiah uh, for only having Russell having one hand. But Messiah having that advancing is a round by round sport. Now, this is show steps. Nice counter left by Gary Russell. They're going at it now. But there you see Messiah with a big edge, according to show stats, in terms of what's landed per round. And that's how you score in fights. But of course, that's just show stats. That's telling you what's landed. You can still make a case for some of those rounds going to Gary Russell. Let's bring in our unofficial scorer, Steve Farhood. Mo, this is a fascinating fight from a scoring standpoint. Maxeo with the counter punching for the first couple of rounds, and Russell starting to potch. Now let's get and some of those uh, straight left hands. And, you know, again, I'll remind you that twice, uh, mitsayo has been down from left hands, oh, delivered man. by right-handers. It's a little harder for us to be up there with his left, and he has to reach a little bit with it. And these guys are normally uh, volume punchers, 72 per round for... Uh, Russell, 65 for McSyle. Neither is approaching that, though McSyle has thrown well over 100 more punches than Russell. Cranky upstairs, yeah. Kenneth told him to turn down the ball yeah. here tonight because he And better to realize his dream to be a, a titleist. I've heard fighters say I could fight this guy with one hand tied behind my back, and yeah. that is what Russell is doing There's tonight. A counter left hand, and to Steve Farhood's point, Russell has been successful pot shotting with the left. Yeah, from time yeah, to time, that left hand gets in. There it does again. He's making McSyle miss a lot and, and landing that left. But McSyle's aggression has gone down. It's Both men obviously successful in later rounds in fights, and we'll see how that all plays out. Lead right by McSale, who extended himself. Russell catches him with a counter left. Yeah, that's the, we, we talked them all oh, by, nice left by McSale, but Russell needs to do that. If he's gonna, gonna do that. We're not doctors, we don't play him on TV, but there's something going on. Well, he literally isn't throwing, he hasn't thrown any for the last rounds. couple of rounds. Yeah, so that punch isn't there for him. But you saw this risk. You know that's the yes. only hand he's got, so you take that risk. You're your power puncher. Chopping right hand by McSyle. But you would think that McSyle, like you mentioned, Abner, trying to find a way to take advantage of this situation. And Russell doing well enough now with one hand, keeping him at bay for the most part. With those thrown more than Russell. Yeah, he's thrown almost twice as many, and yet they've connected on the same amount of punches. Yeah, that's, Russell has been uh, accurate with that left hand getting in from time to time. 
An underused punch, and Abner mentioned this, the left hook of Masai, because it would stop Russell from going his, yes. his right. He landed it to the body, branding with Freddie Roach. Masai didn't know anything about road work. He never ran, so he's become a more conditioned fighter with Freddie Roach. And yet again, pace beginning to slow down here for Maxile. 15 seconds left in the eighth round. That's his spin Russell, man. Russell's doing the work, making Maxile miss. Yeah, the problem, though, is, again, Russell's thrown 24 punches in this round. Is that enough? Can you win a round with that? Punch, the most important punch now in the fight for Gary Russell, I think. I feel that so far Russell has made Maxayo miss a lot. He, he's landed his effective and clean left hands. And, and even though Maxayo is throwing a lot more than Russell, Russell's making a miss. Yeah, the question is, is Russell doing enough offensively to win these rounds? Yeah, I don't know. But yeah, that, and, that, and that's the danger for him. And McSyle's abandoned his jab, too. You know, he was using that a little earlier. I know it's hard against the lefty, but he, it helped. Now, if you fight a left hander, you, you, you want to watch to your right. Yes. To take away that left. Maxayo has not been doing that. To your left. To your left. Yeah, yeah. to your left. He's, yeah. not, he's not been. No, he hasn't. That. That's a very good point. He should go to his left. He's walking straight forward, and that's what he's being and, with those. And the last time he faced Electi, we mentioned it against uh, Rigoberto Hermosillo in that face. Right. Like the, the pace of the fight is to stay in this and have a chance. And you look at the numbers, uh, you know, and while uh, Maxayo is certainly throwing more and according, landing more according to the show stats, which I think is a fair assessment. Uh, it's again, it's round by round, so we'll see. Of this 126-pound title tilt, Gary Russell Jr. making the sixth defense of his belt against undefeated mandatory challenger Mark McSyle. You know, I think the most important point made tonight was made by Abner, and that is that McSyle is not going to his left. When you have a fighter that is a right hook artist, can't use the right hook, and the only thing he can get to is the left hand. You what cannot you veer to the right and walk in and give him a chance to do it. You're not supposed to anyway, but especially in this instance. So strategically, a big mistake by Mike Child. Hey, man, Trainer uh, Freddie Roach might uh, have something to say about <laughs> that in between rounds as uh, we come to the conclusion of the ninth round. Maxile beginning to put the pressure on Russell down the stretch here as we head to round number 10. Let's go to Steve. Current champion in boxing. Six years, 10 months. He won his title back in. I'm very familiar with this weight class. Talk about things that you would like to see each fighter make the adjustments in order to try to well secure the victory here tonight because this fight can very well from Russell I'm sorry left no, 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 no. Al would you want to see anything more added to what yeah, we're well, witnessing here because if he gets to his left what he has to do then is double with the left hook to the body in the head and, and then it'll open up the right hand for him as well now for Russell, he's kind of there. He was he looked up, but he was off to the right. If he stepped to his left, those double left kicks might have gotten there. But Russell is taking what's given to him, and that is trying to pot shot with the left hand. There he throws it again, and McSyle's kind of putting himself in position for that. It's not to say Russell's landing that many of them. He's not, but you know, it's at least an opportunity for him. And Russell's using the ring really well. Yeah, and it's incredible. Russell rendered a one-armed fighter. We can uh, address his output, but for Maxile, his output is gone. Now, he came back to knock out Julio Seja late in their fight, so we'll see what he's got in his uh, later rounds. Well, he was forced to come back there, and again, it's only the unofficial scorecard, but Steve Forehead has him up now by three points. Two of those yeah. all-important championship rounds, a minute left here in the tenth. And you got to give it to Russell. This is a guy that hasn't fought in two years. He's not fighting only uh, inactivity, ring rust. <laughs> He's fighting an injury. injury. Had, when injury. Yeah, that, yes. What we saw earlier, I mean, the output. you have to. There has to be a severe uptick in the output of Mark McSion. And you wonder, why is he not throwing more punches against the guy with a compromise? Why do not have punches thrown by Russell? The shot is still old. That's right. That's right. Blocked, partially blocked by Russell, but he, he has gone downstairs with some, some good body punches. Feds and 
and we will find out just how much more we whose title reign could be in jeopardy. And according to an official score, Steve Farad, Gary Russell Jr., the longest title reign in boxing, that reign is in jeopardy. And you know, in the, in the beginning of this round, McSyle's come out, and not only is he throwing more punches, he's ripping those hooks. He's starting to get those left hooks in. Now, they're a good defensive job by Russell, but that's what McSyle hasn't been doing, and he's starting to do it in this round. It's, you know, it's so funny. After our hard it's right there for McSyle. Take a step to your left and rip hooks. There it is. He just needs to do it. And I was also can stop that because he can't do anything with his right hand. Right arm. Tyler's having a very good round here, though, in the 11th. Got to be more effective, doing more, more volume punching, listening to us. <laughs> in power punches, he's having other than the jab, 42% landing from the tile. So when he throws those punches, he's been effective, and a number of those are body shots. And we got to point out, Gary Russell's got only one hand. Imagine yes. he had both hands. This this fight would have, I don't know, would have been different. I, I, yeah, it would have obviously. Yeah, I guess, but it is what it is. You know, in, in the past, for style conditioning has been a bit of a factor. How he responds to his opponent's power punches, but we see tonight he has a huge advantage mm -hmm. against a compromised. 126-pound champion Gary Russell Jr. And with 30 seconds left here in round 11, Mark McSyle continuing to put on the pressure, but needs to continue to put on those punches. And he, he clearly this round, you know, McSyle's done almost all the offensive work. There hasn't been much done by Russell, so Russell kind of giving away this 11th round. Sayo, three minutes away from potentially changing his the determination of Gary Russell Jr. rendered a one-armed fighter here in his sixth of title defense. And here's where we point out that Russell has landed some good left hands. How many, how have they factored into winning rounds? Clearly, Steve fired on his unofficial scorecard. Doesn't think it's enough. There's been some good offensive power and work with the left hand by Russell. The question you have to ask yourself is, is it enough? Yeah, right now in this round, Russell using the aggression from McSyre to his favor. Waiting for him to come in and he catches him with the left. Again, McSyre throwing punches, but he's missing a lot. Two minutes left in this championship affair. Selling ice cream, trying to make ends meet. Caught the attention of the global icon, Manny Pacquiao, the only fighter to win titles in eight different divisions, including 126 pounds. A man who promotes Mark McSyle, and McSyle could be 90 seconds away from becoming the next Filipino champion. Yep. A moment ago, Russell got a nice left hand in. It wasn't a powerful punch, but it got there. But again, it wasn't anything that could change anything. And Russell now kind of working the pace a little bit. Putting a spin on it by, you know, putting his arms up. But yeah, Russell wants to make that stand, wants to make the last stand, wants to protect his title reign. And the crowd chanting, Gary, as Russell hopes to subject McSyre to Capitol Heights punishment. And you'll need to do so, even with one arm. I'm going to say winning the fight. Wow, and Russell like really bad showing that defense, avoiding those punches, has the high yeah. like you. And he says when it comes to fighting, when it comes to boxing, it's always intellect over athleticism. Yeah. Is his high ring IQ going to be enough? Yeah, and he could well be winning this round. I, I don't want to uh, misstate, uh, you know, because he has landed some of those good left hands. He's made McSyla miss a lot in this yeah. round. And, and this could be a rounds. comeback yeah. round for him. The question is, how much does this help him in the final scoring? We'll find out. And the, the longest title reign in boxing come to an end.